Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about an unusual discovery from 2017 of an exomoon around this planet that you see right here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the details of the discovery and tell you why it's important but also we're going to reconstruct it using Universe Sandbox. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this right here is Kepler 1625b, a cool ice giant, a cool ice giant because it looks cool and also because it's relatively cold here, although technically it might actually be warmer because it is located in the habitable zone of the solar system. Now this object is much larger than, than Jupiter, um, its current estimates of its mass are about 3000 masses of Earth. In this particular simulation it also has these beautiful beautiful rings and unfortunately nothing else. But now we actually think that we've discovered a moon around it. An exomoon as a matter of fact. No, not just an exomoon, the first exomoon, the first moon outside of our solar system. And this is actually pretty exciting for several reasons. Now, we're going to actually go into um, Universe Sandbox and try to create this exomoon using specific um, parameters that have been discovered by the scientists from Columbia University, New York. And uh, I believe the main scientist here is David Kipling. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this star as well. And this is actually Kepler 1625, which is uh, slightly uh, more massive and also slightly bigger or about maybe 80% bigger than our sun. Um, so it's a very sun-like environment with of course the exception being this planet uh, being a gas giant in what seems to be habitable zone. Anyway, so let's recreate this. Now this object or this star is actually very 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 far away from us at a distance of about 4000 light years. Now just to give you sort of a comparison here, let's place a random star. Uh, so Sirius is right there, Alpha Centauri is right there as well, they're relatively close to us, you can kind of see them up here. Uh, but this particular star is like somewhere over here. It's pretty far away. Now this is actually a Kepler star but not exactly the right number because we're going to a star or we're going to create a star known as Kepler 1625. So the star is already present in the game, so we're gonna try to place it right here. And uh, I believe the planet we have to place manually as well, so we're going to just take it and place it at a distance right here and correct this so that it's actually orbiting around the star in about eight, uh, or sorry, not eight, but 287 days. And we also need to change its mass to a more um, accurate estimate of about 3000 masses of Earth thus making it about nine times Jupiter and of course a gas giant. Um, so this is what Kepler 1625b is going to look like in Universe Sandbox. It's basically going to be a gas giant. Now just for fun we're going to see what the temperature will, will get to in a few seconds. Uh, and this is the star itself. So um, if we actually enable the habitable zones, you'll see that it's just on the inner side of the habitable zone, meaning that, you know, you could technically have liquid water somewhere around this beautiful gas giant. Um, now, the scientists who are looking at this system um, discovered that there's about 1 in 16,000 uh, chance of what they've discovered not being true. And of course, as you can probably tell from the title, they've discovered a moon. Now, uh, the moon itself seems to be located at a distance of about um, 20 radii of this planet, which is kind of in between uh, the orbit of Ganymede and Callisto, uh, that orbit around Jupiter. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into planets and place uh, a random rocky planet at a distance right here. And this is going to be known as first exomoon ever. So um, this particular object we think might be Earth-like or I guess terrestrial uh, in terms of mass and in terms of um, 
essentially maybe even everything else. It's between two and four masses of Earth. Uh, it also seems to orbit in a relatively uh, far enough distance to, be, to avoid serious tidal effects. So for all we know, this actually could be some sort of a habitable exomoon. Remember Andor from Star Wars? So think Andor, but much larger, more massive, and possibly even with luscious Earth-like landscapes on its surface. Now, we might actually be able to create this here just for fun. Let's go ahead and give it some water and some atmosphere as well, just so we can actually possibly create a little bit of atmosphere. Now, um, for all we know, um, this gas giant that it orbits around might actually protect it from dangerous uh, solar radiation. And so if that's, if that's the case, um, this is actually a pretty good candidate for not only the first exomoon, but also for like an actual habitable exomoon that we could maybe even settle one day. Now, obviously, there could be a lot more things going on in this particular solar system. And since it's so, so far away, getting here and even studying this um, object is going to be very difficult. But it seems to indicate that not only do we know very little about... Um, exomoons in other solar systems, but it actually creates an opportunity for us to start dreaming and start imagining these incredible objects that are a lot more unusual than we even think, and obviously a lot more unusual that, than anything in our own solar system. Now, I wonder if this will actually warm up enough to, to melt the ice. Uh, it might not actually get to the required temperature. Unless I, of course, change its albedo, and there we go. It actually suddenly turned into an Earth-like terrestrial world. Quite amazing looking, as a matter of fact. Now, for all we know, this is maybe what the first Exomoon actually even looks like. And maybe, just maybe, one day we'll be able to explore it and to discover what's really hiding here. And in, in a sense, the discovery of this exomoon is kind of analogous to the discovery of the first exoplanet. We really didn't expect it to be the way it was. It was a hot Jupiter. It was very, very hot, very close to the star. And we don't really have anything like it in our solar system. And so we were surprised by it. And similarly, this exomoon might be just as surprising to us today. And well, so that's really all we know about it right now. We're going to study it in a little bit more detail by using Hubble telescope uh, sometime in 2017. But for now, this is really the only thing we know about Kepler 1625b's um, exomoon. And that's kind of where I'm going to stop the video. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who wants to learn through video games and someone who enjoys space sciences as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Now, what I actually want to find out is what is the chance of having life here? We're going to go into the Earth Similarity Index and wow, it's 83% similar to Earth and the likelihood for life here is 29%. That is pretty incredible. Whether it's true or not is another question. See you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.